We now join Paul Clark for tonight's extended UTV News. It's approaching 17 minutes past six. Good evening. An attempt at mass murder. Those were the words used by police to describe a shooting at army barracks in Antrim last night in which two soldiers were killed and four other people were injured. The two soldiers killed were due to be deployed to Afghanistan within hours. They're the first soldiers to have been killed here since 1997. One of the injured, a pizza delivery man, is in a critical condition in hospital. The real IRA has admitted responsibility and made no apology for shooting the delivery men, describing them as collaborators. Our reporter Sharon O'Neill has spent the day at Masserine Army Barracks. The people of Antrim stood shoulder to shoulder, united in shock and outrage at the horror inflicted upon their town last night. Nobody wants to go back to this in any way at all. None of us want it in any way at all. And we pray that those who are engaged in this will just stop it this time, go away from it. We don't want those years of the past. They were horrible years for everyone. Police had warned dissidents were about to kill, and they did, here at Mazarine Army Barracks on the Randallstown Road, just outside Antrim. Two soldiers were shot dead and two others injured in an ambush which police described as an attempt at mass murder. They were gunned down at 20 to 10 as they collected a pizza at the gates of the base. The two delivery men, one in his late teens and from Antrim, the other a married Polish man, were also injured. It's understood the Polish man, a father of one, is fighting for his life. The injured teenager has been named locally as Anthony Watson. The four injured men are being treated here at Antrim Area Hospital. This bullet-ridden car bears testament to the indiscriminate nature of the attack. The victims were even shot at as they lay helpless on the ground. Up to 50 bullets could have been fired by the gunmen. We're facing an extremely serious situation. Last night here, Two very young men lost their lives in a very callous and very ruthless attack by terrorists who have no thought and had no thought last night for anyone who was in the vicinity. This attack was well planned. At around 20 past nine, soldiers at the barracks ordered food from Domino's Pizza in the centre of Antrim. The two delivery men left in separate cars for the short journey to the base. Little did they know they were being followed. When the four soldiers came out of the barracks to pick up the pizzas, two gunmen in a nearby car opened fire with semi-automatic weapons. The gunmen, having fired an initial volley of shots, moved forward when people were on the ground and fired additional shots at those people on the ground. So a very, very callous, very ruthless attack. Residents living near the barracks, which is home to the Army Corps of Royal Engineers, were too afraid to speak on camera. But some I spoke to openly wept as they recalled the moment they heard the shots. Forensic teams spent all day combing this area for clues in the hunt for the killers. Late this afternoon, the cars belonging to the delivery drivers were removed for closer examination. Secretary of State Sean Woodward rejected suggestions that security at the base was lax. I don't believe the security at the base was lax last night. I believe that the uh, brigadier, and, and I absolutely uh, back him on this 100%, uh, took the steps that were appropriate. What happened last night was by those criminals who committed it, a pre-planned attempt at mass murder. It's been 12 years since a soldier was murdered here. Lance Bombardier Stephen Restoric was gunned down by the IRA in 1997 as he manned a checkpoint in Bessbrook. What happened here is a shocking reminder of Northern Ireland's darkest days. While politicians are united in their condemnation, it's the police who are now under pressure to catch these killers bent on dragging us back into the past. Sharon O'Neill, UTV Live, Antrim. Our political editor, Ken Reid, is live outside Masserine Barracks and he joins us now. Good evening, Ken. Yes, Paul, it's been a dramatic day with potentially quite serious implications. But quite remarkably, throughout the day, there's been a sense of political unity. As the implications of the Mazarin attacks started to be absorbed, the Prime Minister struck a defiant note. 
He said the peace process would continue in spite of the murders. Our first priority has always been the security of people in Northern Ireland and we'll do everything in our power to make sure that Northern Ireland is safe and secure and I assure you that we will bring these murderers to justice. Uh, no murderer will be able to derail a peace process that is the sport of the vast majority of the people of Northern Ireland. This morning, the Secretary of State and the First Minister visited the army barracks. It's absolutely clear that out there, a very small number of people had pre-planned this attack. It's absolutely clear that this was just not simply an opportunistic event that took place last night, uh, but there was a great deal of pre-planning. It was pre-planning for mass murder, not only of soldiers, but of civilians. We will do everything that we possibly can to encourage everyone in this society to give whatever information might be available to them, to the PSNI, so that the due process of law will be the way through which matters such as these are dealt with. And can I urge all of those who may be angry within the unionist community, this is a matter to be left entirely to the police and the authorities to deal with. They are capable of dealing with it and they shall deal with it and we must give them our full support. Sinn Féin said the murders were wrong and were an attack on the peace process. What we have here is a group of people who want to start a new war against the backdrop of the tremendous political developments uh, in recent times. And uh, I don't believe that they will succeed. We are certainly determined that they will not succeed. And I believe that the political process and the desire of the people of Ireland to ensure the success of this process is stronger than the will of those who would try to plunge us back into conflict and see uh, mass amounts of British soldiers back on the streets again. Because that's the, that's the ultimate uh, conclusion if these people get their way. Politicians united in condemnation. What we need to have is a very united, coherent political response because this is a challenge. It's not a time for parties to be setting tests for each other and putting issues up uh, to each other. This is a time for showing a strong, united response. The government is expected to make an emergency statement in the House of Commons tomorrow. Well, Ken, today's reaction has been marked by a very measured political response, hasn't it? Yes, it's very much that uh, it was interesting both Peter Robinson and Martin McGuinness want to say that business should carry on as usual. Now, the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister were due to fly to the United States this morning. That's been put back a couple of days, but they are still determined to press ahead. They feel that trip can generate business for Northern Ireland, and that if they didn't go, then the terrorists would have won. And really, throughout the day, it's been a very... Uh, the political message has been quite remarkable. All the parties are saying that it's been an attack on the peace process and they're determined to try and get things back to normal as quickly as possible but there, there's no doubting this has been a, an awful attack and it's been a, a very different reaction and a very different mood from last friday following hugh ord's announcement that he'd called in a small number of specialist soldiers Yes, if you go back to last week, uh, Sean Woodward in the House of Commons last Wednesday and then Hugh Ord on Friday uh, admitted that the uh, threat from dissident Republicans was growing almost, almost by the hour. But after that, we had then this situation where Hugh Ord was under considerable political pressure. But uh, today, he was very measured. He didn't want to say, well, I, I told you so, none of that. Uh, but uh, th that, thre that, that threat was real and it's been proved by this attack, but uh, there was no sign of Hugh Ord today saying to the politicians, look, I told you so, uh, I was right. Uh, and I, I think it's interesting now that the politicians themselves are taking a very measured tone at this, uh, this is a very difficult situation and a considerable pressure on the political process. Ken Reid, live at uh, Masserine Barracks in Antrim. Thank you very much indeed. Well, Sir Hugh Ord, as uh, Ken was mentioning there, could have been forgiven today for saying, I told you so. However, his response was measured and sombre. The political row has been set aside for the moment, as Colin Michael Linden now reports. Last night's attack was the first time security forces have been murdered here since Sir Hugh Ord took over as Chief Constable in May 2002.